He didn't want them publicized, but he, uh, I happen to know that they really gave him a lift. Vinny, are you ready? ready. All right, let's just take a two shot here for a moment. Uh, and we'll begin in just a moment. Ready, Charlie? Mr. President, Frank Reynolds covered most of your political career. What was it like to have Frank on the Reagan press bus? Well, many happy memories. Uh, Frank and I, have, I guess, first became acquainted uh, back in 76 when I came east to the New Hampshire campaign and he was on the, the press bus. I had not known him personally to any extent before that. I think that Frank uh, had a perception of me that was kind of based on an image that was prevalent in the East about that wild Westerner out there. Uh, I think we both uh, uh, learned to, to like each other. I think he, he was quick to decide that the image didn't fit. and. Uh, he was a friend, but more than that, he was a professional also. Uh, I, he never let friendship interfere with what he felt had to be said, nor would I have expected him to. He was a very decent man, not only in the way he lived, but uh, in the way he, he did his job. Well, you know, Frank was a man of great courage and integrity, and he yes. had strong views about things, but he was always fair, wasn't he? Yes. I guess that's what I meant when I was saying decent. He was, yes, in his, uh, he thought I did something dumb, he said that. Uh, uh, by the same token, he was very willing to, uh, to go the other way, too. And uh, I remember one day, one incident on the campaign trail where someone was asking uh, something and uh, had to do with something that had taken place uh, out in Sacramento, California. Uh, one of those statements in which, in answer to a question and a hypothetical question in which it could be read one of two ways, and I got irritated. I guess it uh, been a long campaign day, and uh, uh, I just finally shut off the fellow that was asking the question, a uh, group around with the thing that uh, I hadn't said this. What I really meant was I hadn't said it in the context in which he was repeating back to me, and I just turned and stepped inside the door and closed the door and took about two steps and realized that that wasn't fair either, and I turned around and came back out through the door, and I said, wait a minute. And so I did use those words. I did say, and so forth. And it was Frank, of all people, who a little later came around to me and told me, he said, I'm glad you did that. And. Um, I was glad I'd done it too, but um, I remember also in 76 when it was all over and the convention was over, he did a very sensitive and a very warm uh, story. As a matter of fact, uh, he was not supposed to have gone out and to the airport and covered us on the takeoff there, but I found out later he personally insisted on that and did this peace on our whole uh, leaving of the, of the convention. Mr. President, Frank seemed to exemplify to many of us the best qualities of a journalist in that he was tough and he was relentless, but at the same time he was a man of compassion and fairness. For yes. instance, I, I, uh, I have sometimes heard him say that maybe he thinks some of your policies aren't quite right, but I have never, ever heard him say an unkind thing about you or, for that matter, any other person that he's covered. No, this is, he did have compassion and this again is summed up in that, that decency. Uh, in other words, the old cliche, he really could disagree at times without being at all disagreeable. On the day you were shot, Frank Reynolds was in our anchor chair and as conflicting information came into our newsroom, at one point in the afternoon he said on the air, let's get it right, let's nail it down. And some people thought that that was an unwarranted display of temper. What do you think? Well, of course, I wasn't aware of that at the time. I was busy elsewhere. But uh, I have seen a replay of that. 
and of his, there was no question of his uh, impatience with what had happened, and uh, I thought it was completely justified. And I thought, again, it was because uh, uh, his professionalism was requiring uh, more facts than had been made available to him on the situation, and he was simply asking for professionalism on the part of everyone else who was involved. He was our leader, Mr. President, and he sort of inspired us to do just what you said, and that is be professional, get the facts, yeah. and be fair. He was all of that, and I can only tell you that for Nancy and myself, uh, this is really a great sense of personal loss. I know what a loss it is to all of you, and it's personal there too, but I, and it's a loss to the profession itself. Uh, he did set standards. And without ever being uh, uh, preachy about it, he, he set them just by the way he, he conducted himself and uh, his profession and his life. To us, this is, this is really a great sense of personal loss. We, uh, we can feel the loss of the professional, but we feel very deeply the loss of someone that we trusted and believed in as a friend and it didn't hurt one bit that we knew that if uh, we had criticism coming, uh, he would not hold back because of friendship. He'd Tough say what had fair. to be said, yes. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for being so gracious as to share your thoughts of Frank Reynolds with us today. Well, pleased to have the opportunity. I, I wish everyone could have known him. Thank you, sir. I think uh, that was a great tribute you paid to him. And all of us appreciate your doing it. Now we'll take that off with us. <laughs>